Alex, as I have looked over the landscape of consciousness, uh, all the different theories, I specifically avoided any evaluation uh, for several reasons. One, I wanted to focus on the theories themselves. And secondly, I had no confidence in myself that I could evaluate those theories at, the, at this point with any, with any degree of sophistication or um, consistency. Uh, you have uh, been an extraordinary va uh, evaluator of consciousness. You are a reviewer of uh, major works by uh, many of the leaders uh, in the field. Uh, and, uh, in random order, no order in particular, Antonio Damasio and Anil Seth, Nicholas Humphrey, all of whom are from Closer to Truth and all of whom are friends, and you've evaluated them, and uh, you, you know, your evaluations have not always been 100%, shall we say, praise. praise. Uh, so when you do your evaluations of consciousness, those being examples, but in general, um, what are the criteria that you use? What is your attitude towards it? What are you trying to accomplish? Let me preface this by saying two things. One is, I have skin in the game, but I don't have a dog in this fight. And I think that <laughs> helps me, that helps me evaluate them very freely because I don't belong to a particular camp. So really, I feel I can say with, with proper arguments, hopefully, whatever I think, that's not to take for granted because many people cannot do it, cannot, I believe, cannot say what they think really. The second thing I want to preface this by is, since you mentioned, for instance, Anil Seth, I had the, the, the chance to meet him in person and, and he actually told me that he was very, very grateful for the review and I was a bit blushed because I had been a bit harsh in, in, a, in, a, in a loving way. And we sat down and we spoke for two hours reading my own review and that has been one of the most extraordinary collegiality experiences I've had with someone with whom I disagree. So, so, so that's, that's valuable. <laughs> no, it's very mention. valuable. Yes, because we, we fight, but we should also learn to kind of make peace and understand that we are coming from different places and the starting point matters very much, also your temperament. But to your question as to how, how to evaluate, well, I would say two things. The first is that all those theories are not made equal. They are not all created equal. Some theories are, I would say, some sort of glorified metaphor. Mm -hmm. you no, know, the information goes from here to there, and therefore magic happens. If I may, if I may be a bit a bit cheeky here, right? So you 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 have glorified met metaphors. You also have some very few that are mathematically grounded. Others are more like models, maybe not so much theories. And others could be um, just some metaphysical positions articulated neurally. And all these M's, metaphor, metaphysics, mathematics, are, are entangled. So that makes it really hard to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, you could go back to the classic way in which historians and philosophers of science say we should evaluate theories by, well, is this testable, right? Yeah. And I would say yes, but that's not all the story because there are many instances, I would say, in the history of science, and we can also see it today with the infamous pseudoscience pseudo letter against integrated information theory, that science is not that easy as saying, well, that's the theory, that's what it predicts. No. It, it's, it, 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 pseudoscience is right, but pseudo letter is your own yes. evaluation. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because I think so, that's a kind I, of... I, I, I would agree with you on the first part, that pseudoscience was part of the thing, but I'm, I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go to call the letter pseudo, but, but you're free to do it. Well, yep. I, I do it because calling pseudoscience on on many things, but in particular to one of the most spectacular theories there is, is more- the Integrated a, information theory. Yeah. Yes, it's a political move more than a uh, scientific one. And, and it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate to see and to see it signed by so many, so many Prominent, respectable yeah. colleagues. Yeah. It reminds me of that incident where Feyerabend, Paul Feyerabend <laughs> replied to a hundred plus um, authors, including Nobel laureates, when they wrote a letter against astrology. And Feyerabend said, you, don't really, you may be right, but you don't really understand philosophy of science. That's not really how it works. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> I don't want to digress here, but, but what I mean is, sure, you can, you can pick falsation, falsification. You can say, well, can we refute, refute this? But things are, are more complex than that. And it's valuable. There are other axes in which theories can be valuable. For instance, some theories can be more imaginative. They can open doors. And... I don't think they need to be squashed by old logs. These, these kind of bl bl blossoming new flowers, they often too quickly squashed by saying, no, that's nonsense. So 
another aspect would be, well, what, what other ways of understanding does this theory offer, even if they sound weird, that we haven't had on the table for a long time. Mm. And one can also get more technical and say, well, is the theory, of course, logically coherent? Is it consistent or is it empirically adequate? Mm. Is it applicable? So the, the, the business is, is moves in, in, many, in many directions as to rank. And so my recommendation would be, again, let's not rush to have like a competition where one wins because we need a lot of diversity at this point given how the field of consciousness yeah. is. Certainly that's the approach that I have taken, that this is a time to be expansive, not be restrictive in terms of, of theories. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Anil Sith and Tim, Tim Bain made, made a point that, that you would expect as we, we, we gain more data, which neuroscience has done spectacularly, that theor theories would narrow in that process. And we have found that they have proliferated so to me, that's a data point. It's a meta data yes, point. Indeed. That the more knowledge that you have, the, 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 the theories grow broader and wider. So that to me is point. And that's why uh, to, go act, to, to go back to the, uh, the pseudoscience, uh, what you call a pseudo letter, I look upon it as uh, a, a bright spotlight on uh, this whole question. So I like, I like the controversy because it forces us to to deal with uh, uh, with um, new ways of, of of imagining what consciousness is, but this could backfire. I like controversy as well as you may as you may know, but this could backfire because this letter created a weird atmosphere in what's a really nice initiative, which is the, the adversarial collaboration. Where, well, what about young students? Will they now enter or continue into consciousness, knowing that maybe we could soon have a, a winter, you know, a consciousness winter where people just leave it aside because they're not sure. I mean, the, the popular media and not so popular media was saying, well, consciousness is, is pseudoscience now, mm -hmm. which of course it isn't, right? So, well, these struggles are interesting, but also, but also we're playing with fire if we make too much, mm. too much fire out of that. So I, I start, and you can critique me here, I would start in terms of, of, of uh, an evaluation of different theories as what is its fundamental premise? Um, and it, is it based on a fundamental premise? For example, neurobiological theories are based on a fundamental premise of, of physicalism, that the only thing that exists are material things, or materialism, an older term. Um, and other theories uh, are built, built on a different way. That's the, the, the place to start, um, it, to, to, to see that, because that's the way to evaluate it. So the question is, if a theory is not subject to the scientific method, it should always be subject to the scientific way of thinking with no internal contradictions and logic, et cetera. But if it doesn't, it's not subjected to experimentation or observation, replicability, falsification, then it can't be considered. So I would reject that. I agree with you. I think philosophically, philosophical thinking, even if it's not immediately transposable to, to the activity in laboratories, is very valuable. Otherwise, we would become um, defendants of scientism, saying, well, the only thing that really is worth doing is testing things scientifically, and any other adverb, philosophically or experientially, doesn't. It's, it's worthless, basically, and I, I reject that. And the argument is, is that's the only thing we can know for sure. Everything else is speculation. Yes, that's what they would say. So I would only add, we should disclose our metaphysical conflicts of interest. And physicalists have, done, have gone without doing it for a long time. And 100 years ago, our fellow physicists shown that you know, materialism doesn't seem to hold. I don't, I don't understand why they live in the, in the 19th century <laughs> with 21st century tools, but let's give them some time. <laughs>